Jocelyn Wildenstein, also known as Catwoman, has caused a huge debate with her drastic transformation, and we are taking a look at her journey from how she looked then versus now, and what exactly changed along the way. I'm your host for this one, Josh Bedard. Thanks for coming back to Top 10 on the screen. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and leave us a like because it really helps us out. The 80 year old socialite has been known for her highly publicized divorce settlement and for her changing face, which earned her the nickname Catwoman. She was awarded $2.5 billion from her former husband, Alec Wildenstein. Their divorce was famous in the 1990s and was one of the biggest divorce settlements in history. But the huge divorce payout was not the only thing that got her worldwide fame. So did her drastic plastic surgery transformation. Her transformation has been widely reported and reports say that she had made the changes to her face in order to allegedly please her husband. She has denied these claims, but that does not stop people from making harsh claims against her feline features. There is more that meets the eye though. She has had a pretty amazing life that not a lot of people take the time to learn about. She was born in Switzerland and had a middle class upbringing up until the age of 17 when she made the decision to move to Paris. She began dating a Swiss movie producer and after two years together they moved to Paris. That is when she said her life completely changed and she was first introduced to that glamorous lifestyle. She told New York Magazine that she never intended to pursue a career, but that she had a rare talent of decorating, so she calls it, and that she loved to do it. Later on, she dated another filmmaker for five years, Sergio Gobbi, and spent a lot of her time exploring Africa. Before she knew it, her life as a socialite began to move in elite circles across the world. In 1997, when she was on a safari with friends in Kenya, she was introduced to her future husband, at the time, Alec, who came from a family of art collectors and horse racing experts. Because of her love for decorating, it is no surprise that they could both admire art together. The two of them eloped in Las Vegas in 1978 and went on to have two children together. After one year of being married, it appeared that Jocelyn started to use her wealth on plastic surgery procedures. According to a number of biographies, she and her husband got his and her eye lifts and as her career continued, she continued to make her appearance look more feline, cat-like, whatever that means. According to the Daily Mail, she spent two million on surgeries to please her husband, who just so happened to love big cats. She actually kept a lynx as a pet and told Vanity Fair that the lynx has perfect eyes. So there's always been this story surrounding her that she wanted to look like a cat. But there's no confirmation that her husband wanted her to look this way. Alec Wildenstein has actually talked about her transformation with Vanity Fair and said, She was crazy. I would always find out last. She was thinking that she could fix her face like a piece of furniture. Skin does not work that way, but she wouldn't listen. In 1997, Jocelyn said she found her husband in bed with a 21 year old model, which led to an altercation. Alec allegedly pulled a gun on Jocelyn and spent the night in jail. Later that year, he ended up leaving her and the divorce proceedings started immediately. Immediately, the divorce was actually very messy and that's probably why it was highly documented and it actually went on for two years. Sounds like a nightmare. The press coverage of the very messy divorce was bad for Jocelyn because it centered around her looks. Tabloids started dubbing her the Bride of Wildenstein and Catwoman. It was at that point that she hired Republican campaign consultant and advisor Edward Rollins to handle her PR because it got serious. Eventually though, she was awarded $2.5 billion as the divorce settlement and $100 million each year for 13 years afterwards. That's insane. Where's this money coming from? However, the judge stipulated that she could not use any of her divorce payments for more cosmetic surgery. Can you even do that? Can a judge tell you how to spend your divorce money? I'm actually like wondering, so please let me know. <laughs> Sadly, Alec passed away at the age of 67 back in 2008, and since their divorce, Jocelyn has kept a very low profile when it comes to big public events. But she did move on from Alec and started dating a fashion designer named Lloyd Klein in the early 2000s. The two of them aren't pictured together often, but when they are, it is usually at a high fashion or elite art event, which is where Jocelyn's passion for decoration still lies. Now, when it comes to her plastic surgery, people have accused her of having an addiction to it, which she denies. During an interview with the Daily Mail, she actually denied having cosmetic surgery at all and said her high cheekbones were from her natural Swiss background. When asked directly if she's ever had surgery, she said, I quote, no, especially when you look back at my pictures. I think of course I am maybe more beautiful back then. 
When we are young, there's a certain freshness we lose with years, but you still find the same eyes, same high cheeks, or same nose. She has never admitted to getting work done, and her now fiance, Lloyd Klein, says he believes that she has not either. He also told Daily Mail that when they are in France, she is often mistaken for the French actress Brigitte Bardot. In 2018, she did a very unexpected interview with Paper Magazine after staying silent for almost 20 years. She did the interview with Lloyd, and they both told the magazine that the plastic surgery stories all came from her ex husband Alec and that they are not true. They even showed photos of Jocelyn when she was 17 and 18 and pointed out that she's always looked like a cat and had cat shaped eyes. She ended the interview by saying people in her life who knew her as a teen would know that she has not had any surgery and that she's nothing to prove to the rest of the world. As of right now, she is currently still with Lloyd Klein and the two of them have gone through a lot of personal struggles recently after he was diagnosed with cancer. He was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer and was told he had six months to live if his body did not respond to the new treatment. In 2019, he revealed his brand new face after beating cancer and said he is very happy with the procedure and called it magic. He happily showed his new look on the Daily Mail TV and announced that he was cancer free, which is great, that's so exciting. But what shocked people the most was that he revealed Jocelyn has had work done on her face. During this interview, he revealed that Jocelyn is considering getting the same procedure done that he's had. But he said, she's known for going under the knife. She loves this technique. She actually approved of it. Jocelyn loves the result. She is considering to use the secret. Throughout all the interviews throughout her career, there has always been a lot of denial around the topic of plastic surgery. So this statement was very confusing to fans because they've been wanting her to just admit it for a long time. But she's also still like, really not admitting it, but he kind of did? I don't know. Despite what we think, true or not, her look has drastically changed throughout her life. But the most important thing is she says she is happy with her appearance and encourages others to be the same. Many times when we see celebrities, we view them as these perfect specimens. The truth is that a lot of them have had plastic surgery or some type of work done to reach that look that they now have. More often than not, I find myself repeating the phrase, I'm not ugly, I'm just broke. I'm not ugly, I'm just broke. However, today's story will make you feel a little bit better about yourself. Although before we jump into that, I need you guys to tap that like button to show some love to the channel. And with that out of the way, let's just get right into it. For those of you who don't know who Michaela Romanini is, allow me to give you some background history first. Michaela is about as famous in Italy as Paris Hilton is in the United States. For years she has been known as an Italian socialite and from a young age she has been experimenting with plastic surgery. Sadly, once it started she just couldn't stop and would end up getting herself deeper and deeper into the world of cosmetic surgery. She was once a very attractive young woman, but an obsession with lip injections has drastically altered her appearance over the years. By far her favorite procedure has been lip collagen injections. Eventually these would become like a drug to her as she would continue to get them until her lips had completely morphed into something else altogether. According to reports online, her plastic surgery journey started at the age of 19. Adding to her plumped up and completely oversized lip injections, Michaela would also indulge in tons of Botox. This was meant to smooth out every possible wrinkle with the hope that she would be left with a shiny, expressionless forehead. Although for some reason all the multiple injections did was begin this transformation to a more masculine looking face. From photos it appears as though she may have had some type of rhinoplasty done as well. This pulling back of the nose and tightening on her cheeks could be what's adding to that more masculine appearing look that she now has. Her eyebrows also seem to add to that more masculine looking appearance too. Compared to previous photos, her new eyebrows look like they either have been tattooed or received hair transplants. They just look much more pronounced than ever before. We can't fault her too much though for continuing to change her looks. As I mentioned earlier, she was once considered to be one of the most beautiful women in Italy. She was even respected for her looks, although perhaps wanting too much of something makes it all the more dangerous. I'm sure at times she just didn't know when to stop receiving surgeries. The sad truth about botched plastic surgeries is that Michaela isn't alone on this front. Many celebrities have used their enormous wealth to drastically change their looks, and while some have succeeded in this bizarre venture, others have certainly taken it too far. However, once you've already invested in one surgery, I can see how easy it would become to rationalize the next one. Especially if your plastic surgeon is sitting there telling you what's wrong with your face, that's bound to make even the most confident and celebrities a little bit insecure.
secure. I've heard about scenarios like that time and time again, where a person goes into an office to get one thing done, and then before they know it, they've been swindled into 10 other surgeries. I mean, look at what happened with Michael Jackson, Mickey Rourke, and Heidi Montag. Heidi especially is very sad. She just wanted to make it in Hollywood, so when her surgeon started listing her imperfections, it obviously made her cave to adding more than she bargained for. I imagine this is the same situation that was going on with Michaela. Michael Jackson is another great example of this. He had one nose surgery, and then another, and then another, and it probably had nothing to do with getting the perfect nose, but rather a botched surgery the first time that just needed to constantly be corrected. I truly hope that as time goes on, people will start to learn that Hollywood is truly all smoke and mirrors. Most of what you're seeing isn't real, and nine times out of ten, the celebrity that you're jealous of has had work done. That doesn't mean that you should get work done, it means that this person is also extremely insecure and just had the money available to try and patch up that hole they feel inside of them. The truth is, no number of plastic surgeries will change your insecurities. Change has to start within, and really what most people need to do is find a way to love themselves. I bet if more celebrities didn't hate who they were, they wouldn't feel such a pull to try and completely change their appearance. If you like yourself, why would you want to look like someone else? There are a lot of celebrities and influencers who have altered their appearances. People like Donatella Versace and Amanda Lepore have very drastic and unique appearances, but I don't think any of them even come close to Sahara Tabar. Sahara is an Iranian social media star whose drastic appearance skyrocketed her to fame. People call her the zombie Angelina Jolie because of her corpse-like features. Some say that her appearance is both terrifying and intriguing because her sunken features baffle the minds of a lot of her followers. So how did this happen? How did she end up looking this way because she certainly was not born with these exaggerated features? And how have people reacted to her insane appearance? Before I get into things, please go ahead and leave us a like on the video because your likes really help us out a lot. So Sahara Tabar, also known as Zombie Angelina Jolie, has risen to fame online because of her looks. Things started to take off for her in 2017 after posting pictures of herself on Instagram. She soon racked up hundreds of thousands of followers on social media because people were so intrigued with her drastic looks. Once she got media attention, people started asking the question on everybody's minds. This being, how did this happen? Sahara told sources that she had undergone over 50 plastic surgeries in order to look like her favorite actress, Angelina Jolie. Once these answers got out, fans went from being puzzled about her appearance to being a little horrified that she got so many procedures done, which resulted in her achieving this eerie, sunken in look. Trans model Amanda Lepore is another celebrity who's undergone a number of surgeries to achieve the look that she has now, but she doesn't even come close to the level of alteration that Sahar has achieved. This 20 year old corpse bride, as some have taken to calling her, has seemingly done the impossible and has changed the entire structure of her face to make herself look more more beautiful. Or at least this is what people were led to believe for a long time. After blowing up on social media and going along with the story that 50 surgeries achieved this drastic zombified look, Sahara came clean about everything and it's a little shocking. Turns out everything was a lie. The zombie Angelina look, the story of how she got to look this way, and even her name turned out to be one huge lie. Sahara's real name turned out to be Fatima Kishband, and no, she hasn't really gotten 50 surgeries either. Her entire corpse bride look comes entirely from Photoshop as it turns out. After posting a side by side comparison to her Instagram, she came clean to her followers showing how she really looks. I mean, for a long time, people suspected that Sahara's look were the result of Photoshop and makeup because the images looked so unnatural. Natural, but it's still so crazy to see her before and after pictures. The image on the left shows Tabar in her natural state. No sunken in eyes or giant lips or sharpened cheek and jaw bones. She looks like a normal, albeit very beautiful woman. The image on the right shows what people had thought she looked like for years. She captioned the image revealing her editing secret saying quote, people are probably living in the 18th century and they haven't seen or heard of technology or makeup and they're really surprised, end quote. I mean, I'll give it to her, that almost almost mummified version of herself really does look like Angelina Jolie in a way, but it's also a little nightmare inducing, not gonna lie. All in all, the facial structure was faked. Her lips were enhanced in post, and her icy blue eyes were just contacts that she used to enhance the look. Sahar has admitted to getting some work done, but not nearly as much as she once lied about. No, instead the influencer has gotten a quote, nose job, enlarged mouth, and liposuction. Now that we know the truth, it's no harm, no foul, right? Well, 
think again. Tabar's online antics were taken very harshly by the Iranian government, and so she was charged with corruption of young people and disrespect to the Islamic Republic. The influencer started off trolling people online with drastic looks, and instead of making people laugh, it made people mad. Her doctored selfies aren't the only things that led to her arrest, but it's the most prevalent reason. Now Sahara is sentenced to 10 years in prison for her online antics, and her Instagram account has been deactivated. Tabar's lawyers have been trying to get her freed after some of her other charges like blasphemy and inciting violence were dropped and even after she contracted COVID-19 while behind bars. This hasn't seemed to work though, but there are still some who are looking for support for the influencer. Masih Alinajad, an Iranian journalist and activist, even contacted the real Angelina Jolie for help freeing Sahar since the actress is known for her humanitarian efforts. It seemed only fitting for Angelina to free her doppelganger. Alinajad has said publicly that this punishment is not fair, saying quote, Islamic Republic has a history of tormenting women. We need to be united against this gender apartheid." End quote. It's so crazy to think that this girl's effort at trolling the internet with her drastic looks has resulted in her getting jail time. I have to say, I kind of feel bad for her. I mean, I don't know their laws over there, so I'm not really one to interject, but I feel like a 10 year sentence is a little harsh. But then again, there could be a bunch of other undisclosed information about this case that we don't know about. Since we talk about changing looks a lot on the channel, I thought I would try and break down the changing looks of Donatella Versace over the years, although it's not an easy feat. I'm Mackenzie, you're watching Beyond the Screen, and let's get into it. In 1993, when Donatella was 37, is when she was first introduced to the fashion world as Gianni's sister. She had naturally smooth skin, full lips, and there were some faint wrinkles around her eyes and lips, as to be expected. Then a few years later, in 1997, when she was 42, she stepped out again, this time looking even younger than she did in 1993. With some of her wrinkles being smoothed, we can assume from Botox. But she still looked like herself then, no drastic changes. But it looks like she started really changing her looks with fillers or other procedures in around 2002, with one doctor commenting that it looked like she was getting filler regularly at that point, with her lips looking noticeably bigger, as well as her wearing heavier makeup more regularly. And it seems that from about 2002, the procedures just got more frequent as her face started to change fast. Then in 2005, she stepped out looking slightly different again. The most notable difference was her tanned skin. Around this time is when she also revealed that she had been struggling with an addiction to coke for the last 18 years. Because of this, Versace checked into rehab in 2005. Post rehab, her tan got a lot darker and she sported drastically different lips compared to her naturally full ones. The new look would go down in pop culture infamy as the quote, trout pout. And I don't know much about how drug use affects the face, but I can assume after 18 years, it would make your face look quite a bit different. Then in about 2011 to 2014, Donatella took a turn for the worse and started to become unrecognizable. Doctors were not sure of what caused all the changes, but closer to 2011, her face seemed rough, kind of paper-like. But then in 2014, her forehead was glassy, a sign of too much Botox. And she actually admitted in 2013 that she does use Botox, adding that she quote, doesn't believe in an all natural look for women. Also around 2011, one doctor noted that her lower face started to look strange with her lips still getting bigger. The doctor said she might have had a lower face or even neck lift too. Then in 2014, her eyebrows started to droop, another sign that she might be having too much Botox in the forehead, and her forehead muscles were not working as they should. Also, her lips and mouth in general seemed to just get larger, and at this point, she was unrecognizable from the Donatella we knew from 1993. Also around this time, Donatella admitted that she stopped working out with a trainer because they quote, wouldn't let her smoke. So clearly not taking her long-term health into consideration. And a long-term effect of smoking is sagging of the skin, especially around the mouth, so that could be why that happened to her. And these days, Donatella's waxy skin, smoky eyes, trout pouch, sculpted body, and platinum hair have become her most recognizable features. As well, many doctors think that the lasering of the skin could also be the cause of her waxy and shiny looking skin. Now to weigh in on what exactly doctors said about her botched transformation. HollywoodLife.com asked plastic surgeons what they think Donatella's had done to her face. Plastic surgeon Dr. Steve Fowl said, quote, she's pretty much had it all. Botox, fillers, lasers for the skin, minimal recovery time for those, though there can be some redness of the skin for a few weeks with laser therapy. Adding that she also might have had a brow or facelift. Dr. Bruce Katz, based in NYC, had this to say, quote, she has had her cheeks augmented probably with filler and certainly her lips have been filled. Her eyelids are a little droopy. I think she's had some bad Botox because they look like they are drooping. 
maybe a little too much Botox in the forehead. She certainly can use some filler in her earlobes. They are very stretched. Then Dr. David Rappaport agreed with his colleague saying, quote, from 2002 on, her face seems to have more artificially defined fullness, where now her lips seem to be overinflated. Most recently, it seems very clear that she's had a facelift scar that I can see in front of her temple area. You can see a fine linear scar. Her face looks more taut and tight. She's clearly undergone facelift surgery, perhaps overinflated cheeks and lips. He also added that it doesn't look like her nose has ever been done, but that there's a potential that she's had more than one facelift because of how unnatural it looks. Donatella is currently 65 years old, but because of her cosmetic changes, many people think that she looks much older. Also because some say she was addicted to tanning for years, this has also caused tons of irreversible skin damage that has also deteriorated her skin and made her prematurely age. But there is one thing for sure we can know about her looks, and that is Donatella's signature platinum blonde hair is not going anywhere. People get plastic surgery all the time. It's really quite a normal thing nowadays. We have the medical technology to be able to change almost everything about your appearance. So whether you're going in for a little bit of filler or going to get your entire face changed, anything is possible with plastic surgery. One celebrity who knows this better than anyone is Amanda Lepore. Amanda is a transgender model whose drastic looks are really quite famous and a lot of people are curious as to how that happened. Amanda has said that she has the most expensive body in the world because of how many procedures she's had and has opened up about the times that she's gone under the knife and how her life has led her to this point. It's quite an interesting story, so let's dive into how Amanda Lepore drastically changed her looks. Amanda's memoir, Doll Parts, really dove into her life and legacy, and we learned a lot about the American socialite from her upbringing to where she is today and the surgeries that gave her her signature look. Amanda wrote that she was born on November 21st, 1967, and when she was about 10 years old, she saw something on TV that changed her life. There was a program on TV that talked about gender confirmation surgery, and so after watching it, she went to her parents and told them that she wanted one, saying, quote, I was a girl, it was a fact, it wasn't a conscious decision, end quote. She opened up about about her early life saying that her family wasn't very welcoming of her identity, saying that she drifted from her family quite early in her life. So as you could imagine, Amanda telling her family that she's trans did not go over well at first. At the age of 15, Amanda was looking for a community and she sort of found it. She met a go-go dancer named Bambi and in exchange for hormone pills, she traded sequin garments that she handmade at home. Before long, Amanda was starting her transition thanks to her bedazzling skills and help from Bambi. Though she was ruthlessly bullied at school, she can continued to embrace her identity by coming to school all dressed up. Amanda would say that when she's really done up, she feels happy and mentally well, as opposed to when she's more dressed down. And this started very early on in her life, which could explain the over-the-top looks and personality. Before I continue on with the video, I just want to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on the video if you are enjoying it so far, because it really helps us out. At this point, embracing her femininity, Amanda's mother began accepting her daughter for who she was. Buying her makeup and clothes, they grew a bond as her father and brother disapproved and basically went out of the picture. It was then that she dropped her birth name, adopted her new name, and began her life as Amanda Lepore. At the age of 17, she met a man named Michael who was 10 years her senior and still lived at home with his parents. They fell in love and after revealing to him that she was transgender, he supported her and they made the steps towards getting Amanda gender confirmation surgery. Paid for by Michael's father, Amanda got the procedure done and married Michael a year later. Things didn't work out though as Michael forced Amanda to become a housewife and he abused her. She later left him and went to live a life on her own. After leaving her husband, Amanda moved to New York and found work in the club scene. It was here that things took off for Amanda for a number of reasons. Firstly, she became part of the culture in the city. She watched as club life and entertainment changed over the years. She watched as trends would come and go and this really shaped her as a person. She met some influential people and rose up in the ranks of fame, acquiring connections and some money here and there. But her true fame came when she met photographer Dave LaChapelle. Amanda soon became his muse and in a way he lifted her out of the confinement of the club scene and brought her into true fame. Soon she was being brought to parties, meeting more influential people and being featured in magazine spreads for publications like Playboy and Visionaire. She started making more money and began investing that money into herself. As she started her plastic surgery journey, her look became more and more unique and drastic to the point where she was no longer famous for being a model, she was famous for being herself. Just like how Kim K is famous for being herself and having her famously large booty, same goes for Amanda being famous for her drastic bombshell look. Over the years, Amanda got a number of procedures done. Some were free and others were paid for with the money that she earned through modeling and being a socialite. 
One of the first procedures that she got done was a nose job when she was just 15 years old. Amanda said that this surgery was done for free by a doctor that she met in a club and that she got the procedure done to slim down her nose. She also technically got her gender confirmation surgery for free as well as her ex-husband's father is the one who paid for the operation. She said that this operation totaled around $10,000 but since her father-in-law footed the bill, she didn't have to worry about the cost of that procedure either. Though she started off receiving her hormone treatments from her friend Bambi for trading sequin bikinis, she later had to start paying for her own treatments, maintaining her routine since she was 15. Other procedures Amanda has had done include her hairline lowering and eyebrow lifting procedures, where she got these done to create the look of a smaller forehead. She's also received double eyelid surgery to make her eyes look bigger, cheekbone augmentation to give her face a more heart shaped look, lip augmentations and corrective lip reductions because she actually went little overboard at one point. On top of that, she's also received a number of breast augmentations over the years, gradually working her way up to a double D cup. And she's gotten rib reshaping surgery in Mexico because the procedure is actually illegal in the US. This operation is where doctors break the patient's bottom ribs and push them in in order to create a smaller waist shape. Amanda has spent tens of thousands of dollars on plastic surgery over the years and she doesn't seem to have any regrets about it, other than the lip augmentations that went a little overboard. She writes in her book that there isn't one way to be trans, just like there isn't one way to be a woman. She compares herself to Caitlyn Jenner, saying that she's the complete opposite, saying quote, After seeing the Caitlyn Jenner show, I think my book is an alternative to where you can be hyper feminine and enjoy not being so serious. She says it's fine if you don't want to wear makeup and dress up, but the larger than life things are what make her happy and that's also okay. She supports those who want to transform themselves into the dream version of themselves, saying quote, I like women who transform themselves. It's what I do. My high is looking fabulous. Preach, girl. Though yes, Amanda's look is a little out there, it's eye-catching, and I guess that's exactly what she was going for. Though she says that she has a hard time dating because of who she is and what she looks like, she seems to be fine with it because she's happy with herself, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. We've done a few of these videos on how certain peoples have drastically changed their looks, and each person looks vastly different than the next. The overarching theme here seems to be plastic surgery. From fillers to nips and tucks, a lot of the people we featured have changed their faces and bodies a lot, but some of them have gotten famous for it. People like Amanda Lepore and Sahar Tabar have become famous for their exaggerated looks because they're easily recognizable, but today I'm going to tell you about someone who's experienced quite the opposite. This woman got work done to make herself look more beautiful so she could become famous, but the over-the-top plastic surgery ended up having a different effect and instead she's faded into obscurity because of it. Priscilla Caputo was an aspiring model from California looking to make it big in the industry. As many people in the industry do, she got plastic surgery to enhance her appearance. I'm sure we're all aware that the modeling industry is very picky when it comes to the models that they promote, so there is unfortunately a lot of pressure on people to look perfect, even though realistically there is no perfect person. Anyway, Priscilla was a little self-conscious about her looks and she told sources, quote, I'd look in the mirror and see somebody who needed a little more help, end quote. Priscilla started getting fillers primarily in her lips to enhance their size and shape, but unfortunately, she didn't know at what point she should stop. Before I continue on with the video, please do consider leaving a like on the video to help support the channel. We love getting your feedback, so please go ahead and smash that like button. Priscilla told sources that she didn't realize the monster that she had created until it was too late. Her her boyfriend at the time was a plastic surgeon who performed the procedures on her, but he never advised her to stop getting fillers. Priscilla said that he never said to stop, so she just kept going. It wasn't until she posted a selfie on Facebook that showed off her drastically changed looks that she realized what she had done. Soon she was going viral for her altered appearance and she became an internet laughing stock. Gone were her chances of becoming a model because she had pushed the limits of cosmetic alteration too far and her appearance, both physically and socially, were changed forever. Priscilla ended up in therapy because her tarnished appearance took a severe toll on her mental health. She revealed how her looks caused her to become deeply depressed and wanted to end her own life, saying, quote, My life turned into a nightmare. Priscilla is now using her experience as a warning for others, saying that those who are looking to alter their appearances should rethink their decisions, saying, quote, You'll be much happier if you stay with what nature gave you, end quote. Her plastic surgery not only took away her happiness, but also her prospects of becoming a model as she had once aspired to be. Her opinion on plastic surgery has definitely changed from when she first started and I said, quote, I can't look at these pictures of myself without crying, but I'm willing for people to see them if it helps just one girl avoid the path that I took. It's 
so sad to see the toll that these cosmetic alterations have taken on this woman. But luckily, she's in a better place mentally than she was before. Her lips have returned to a normal size after stopping her collagen treatments and other plastic surgeries. Now, I want to know your take on this. Would you ever get plastic surgery or fillers? And after hearing about Priscilla's story, are you afraid that this might become an addiction like Priscilla? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But in the meantime, let's do some comment shoutouts from our video of the top 10 worst celebrity scandals 2020 part 3. MLG Gamer says, New Year's goal, be able to afford to go back and finish my university degree or make something of myself that even if I don't graduate, I could still hold my own and be more dependent. That is an amazing goal. I'm wishing you the best. University is super hard and I applaud anybody who's able to get through it because it is definitely an accomplishment in and of itself. Not even just, you know, be able to get a job after, but like the fact that you went through all of these years of education and it's grueling, like I'm rooting for you. I'm, I'm definitely rooting for you. Cannibal Cat says, I think it's weird that Jada met him through her son. If it was a mutual friend, then it would be different, but being a son's friend seems weird. I kind of think so too, not gonna lie. Like again, if it was a mutual friend, cool. But it's the fact that they met through her son, they were friends, and then the family decided to take him in, which already seemed like something that her son would do, like as a friend, like, hey, you need help? Come stay with us for a little bit. And then it kind of became like weird and they had a relationship and like, it's kind of like Jada was dating her son because they were the same age. It's weird. It's kind of weird. I don't know. But it's over now, I think, so whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Jimmy Maxter says, my New Year's resolution is to read the driver's manual and finally get a license and a car. I Awesome, awesome. I am still trying to get my license. Everything's locked down in the moment, so I can't do that. But if you have the means to do that, go for it. it is, again, just like the university thing, it is an accomplishment in and of itself. So good luck with that. Trump Entertainment says, as a disabled person, I was upset that Sia cast an abled actress in a disabled role, as it shows how close-minded she is as a person. In 2021, I'm looking forward to doing more stand-up gigs for my YouTube channel, Trump Entertainment, and to make my dream as a screenwriter come true in the UK. Awesome, I, all these New Year's resolutions, so cool. Screenwriting, you must be a very, very, very creative person, so I'm rooted for you. Also, I kind of agree with you with this whole casting thing. I know a lot of people had like very different opinions, but I feel like, you know, representation in Hollywood is a really, really, really big thing. So I feel like I'm assuming that the character that was cast was like the main character. So I feel like having someone who was actually on the autism spectrum to play that role would be so great for representation, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not a Hollywood director or caster, I don't know. Bookish Raider says, for the Tom Cruise situation could have been handled much differently, although I understand where his heart is with COVID being such a big thing at the moment. Yeah, a lot of people kind of harped on him because he was so aggressive, but like, I think at this point in time, given that COVID has been such a huge thing in our all of our lives for such a long time, and people are still like not taking it seriously, I feel like he needed to do what he did in the stern way that he did to really get through to these people. Cause I'm sure that after being yelled at for so long, I'm pretty sure that they would not, you know, break the rules again. Nora Gibson says, all the people that break the law deserve what they get, even if they are a celebrity. 100% agree with that. Celebrities should be role models. A lot of people look up to celebrities and if they're breaking the rules, that's just gonna be like, hey, I can break the rules and so can you, woo. But like, no, don't break the rules. <laughs> be good role models. Slim Arcane Z says, after hearing the way you responded to Holly Simpson's comment, I'm convinced you should do ASMR. I really should not do ASMR. I hate my voice with a burning passion and people already yell at me for talking too loud even though I'm supposed to project because if I can't or if I don't, you can't hear me. So to the people who call me a wench for screaming, I'm looking at you. Sean Marrow says, you're so beautiful, Brie. I enjoy your reports so much. Don't ever stop being you. Thank you. You have such a kind soul. I love that awesome energy. Thanks so much for your comments and for sticking around until the end of the video. I've been your host, Brie Room, and until next time, stay safe, have an awesome day, and if you're watching this video on January 6th, please be nice to me in the comments. It's my birthday. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Priscilla Caputo is an aspire, not is, was, whoops. <laughs> New Year's goal, New Year's goal, be able to,
<sighs> New Year's goal, be able to afford, oh my God. Be able to afford enough to go back to, what is even the sentence? Ah, 